Welcome to the Strategy Rewind Podcast. I am your host, Miguel LeBron. Here at the Strategy Rewind Podcast, we look at the relationship between goals, strategies, belief, and objective breakthrough. I'm so excited for today's episode. Hey, if we haven't met before, thank you for being connected here today. I am a father, a leader, an author, a strategy coach, and mentor, and I partner with individuals who have a goal but need a strategy. And in this podcast, we focus on the strategy to help you have a breakthrough moment. I'm of the belief that there is a relationship between faith and hope. And either we don't know this or we neglect to recognize this, but there is a relationship between faith and hope. I think faith talks to us about the past, of what has happened, while hope looks at the future. Faith looks at what has happened. And because we have experienced a particular blessing, we have experienced a particular glow up, as they say, hope tells us it can happen again and it will happen again. See, faith looks at the past while hope looks at the future saying this can happen again. If it happened once, if I had my breakthrough moment once, then it can happen again. I know many times when we talk about faith, we are looking at the spiritual side of our life. Now, listen, maybe you say, I don't go to church. I don't pray. I don't. Okay, fine. But we are all spiritual beings. And part of our health is also our spirituality. And part of that spiritual nature that is in all of us, rather we develop it or not, is faith and hope. It is part of our DNA. It is part of our makeup. The truth is that oftentimes we face struggles, challenges, chaotic moments that make us question our faith and lose our hope. That's why today's episode, we are talking about strategies so that you can maintain hope alive. In my personal life, I've faced difficulties that have put to test my faith, that have put to test my hope of the future. One time in particular, my wife and I, we had already had our first daughter and our second daughter had already been born. We were getting excited because we knew that a third child was arriving. And deep down inside of me, my wife knew it. My close friends and relatives knew it. I had put it into prayer. God knew it. I wanted to have a baby boy. And as we were getting ready for this child's arrival, as we were just getting in the early stages, my wife had a miscarriage and the pregnancy did not actually go full term. Later on, we had tried again. And this time my wife was now pregnant and this pregnancy had gone full term. And yet, while I was happy for the life that we were about to have in our daughter, I mourned the loss of the son I never had. And it was a moment where my hope was challenged. My faith was challenged deeply. And I questioned a lot of things at that moment. It was something that I had believed God for. It, it was something that I had prayed for. It was something that my wife and I had been in agreement on. It was something that I longed for because as a, as a child, I didn't have my father around. And I wanted to be able to be there specifically for my son. <laughs> but that chance, that opportunity had not presented itself. And to be honest, this last pregnancy was a challenging moment for my wife. We knew that this, this was going to be the last pregnancy. When the dust settled, my, my hope was tested. I stood in this position of asking myself, what's next? And how do I maintain hope alive when I have believed for something, prayed for something, waited for something, planned for something, envisioned something, and it did not come to fruition. The number one thing that I did was that I surrounded myself with people that nourished my hope, people that reminded me that there is more to life, and that I had been entrusted by God with this young, smart, intelligent, funny girl to be her father. So I surrounded myself with people that elevated, that nourished my hope. And number two, what I did was that I began to celebrate 
the winds. Even though I wasn't going to be able to experience what it was to father a boy, I could not ignore and I cannot ignore the fact that I have been entrusted by God with these three smart, intelligent, amazing, beautiful girls. And so I began to meditate on this reality that I had a family, that I still had the chance to display what a real father should do and how he should be present and aware and love and be vulnerable and be willing and be willing to surrender, to give, to play around, to, to, to do all these things that I did not experience. I still had the chance. And so I began to celebrate this win. But I also, I also further began to meditate. I took time to acknowledge the fact that I was blessed and highly favored. I took time to acknowledge because oftentimes when our hope is tested, when our faith is tested, we begin to drown ourselves in what we don't have. Well, I began to acknowledge what I do have. I took more time to meditate. I asked myself these questions, and I encourage you to to do the same. Take time to meditate. Ask yourself some tough questions and embrace that moment. Three to five minutes that you can take to ask yourself these really serious questions. Consider these questions because these are questions that I ask myself. How do I feel right now? How do I feel right now? How would I feel if I lost everything I have? And how would I feel if I lost everyone I love? These are questions that I, that I use when meditating. The things that are important to me and the, the things that I value and hold dear to my life may be different to you. So you're going to have to find some questions that's going to help you bring to life your hope. And you're going to have to surround yourself with people that will help you with your hope. Because hope looks towards the future and faith looks towards the past. And if we can remember that, listen, good days aren't behind us, but rather they're, they're up ahead of us, then we can really keep hope alive. Now, these are the strategies that I have used in order to maintain hope alive in my life. However, I want you to have a breakthrough moment. I want you to be able to maintain hope alive in your life. So to continue on this conversation, I've invited Dr. Ashley Cross. She is the executive director of G2 Rochester and the founder of The Hub 585. Thank you for being here with us today. Hey, thank you for having me. (laughs) Please, for those who aren't familiar with the work you're doing, let them know about yourself. Yeah, so um, as you said, I'm the executive director of Generation 2, where we promote the social emotional well-being of children uh, through play. So it's a play initiative. Uh, And then I'm the founder of the Hub 585, where our mission is to uh, preserve families and protect children. And one of the ways that we're doing this is through uh, the establishment of the Hope Center. There's some amazing work being done at the Hub 585 and outstanding work being created with the Hope Center. I want to encourage you all to check out the show notes because you're going to find information there so that you can get connected. It's so important that we sow the seed into this next generation. Of course, we're living in a world where it seems like the landscape is ever changing and it seems further difficult to maintain hope alive. How do we do this? Give us some tactics here, some strategy on how we can keep hope alive even in the time of change. Yeah, I think uh, the first is understanding, you know, the guiding principles of hope. And, And one of those is that hope is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It's actually a science. It is something that can be taught. And so through that, understanding that in times of change, it's not necessarily about how we feel. Um, but how we can train our mind to believe uh, that our future can be better than our past and that we actually have a role in playing, you know, in making it better. Uh, So when we're talking about times of change and vagueness and ambiguity and just uncertainty, um, we have to really, one, be anchored in in the belief that our future can be better than our past and knowing that we have the power to to make it so. And so hope is uh, one of the few things in life that actually has a formula. um, And that's really cool to me. Uh, Hope is the ability to set goals. It's pathway thinking. That is not only can I set goals, but I can tell you what I'm supposed to do to get there, uh, as well as agency thinking. And that is, do I believe that I am capable enough 
uh, to achieve these goals. And so in times of uncertainty, we have to put ourselves, we have to remember that that formula, it's goal setting, it's agency, and it's pathway thinking. Awesome. Just awesome. You know, we talk about setting goals. Goals invite change. We understand that goals invite change. But oftentimes, as we mentioned, it's hard to maintain that faith in those times of change. Now, furthermore, when change brings forth tribulation or a time of suffering or a time of pain, it's even much more difficult to keep hope alive then. So for the listeners who are connected here today and maybe going through some difficult time, this difficult transition in their life, how can they keep hope alive? Yeah, yeah. You know, James Baldwin has one of my favorite quotes uh, that I've I recently read, and that is that hope must be reinvented every day. And what that quote tells me is that what may have given you hope yesterday might not be the same thing today, right? And, and for me, you know, I, I do have an anchor and hope that's Jesus for me. Um, he doesn't change, right? And that, that's the faith piece of it. Um, but when we're talking about hope as, as it being a science and maybe somebody is not necessarily anchored in the eternal nature and characteristics of Jesus, um, for them, that their hope might wither. It might change depending on circumstances. And so we're talking about trying times. We have to wake up every morning, go back to, do I have the pathway? Do I have the agency? But then also realizing that there are guiding principles that can help us during times of trouble. Um, hope is a social gift. And so we tell people all the time, if you don't have that social, you don't have that support where you can go to somebody and saying, hey man, I'm actually feeling kind of kind of hopeless today. And they can help bring you back to one, what God said about you and two, what your goals are. And in those moments, that can kind of help you during times where it seems like everything is really cloudy, everything is really dark. Those people for us, they hold hope when we don't have it, and they can give it back to us in those times where we need somebody to remind us about what we said, um, and more importantly, what God said about us. So surrounding yourself with hopeful people is so important, uh, definitely during trying times. It's massively important to surround yourself with people that will nourish your vision. And of course, in those moments where our hope is being tested, that we would surround ourselves with people that will nourish our hope. For the individuals, the listeners that are connected here today and want to connect with you and connect with the Hub 585 and connect with everything that you're doing and continue building their hope, how could they get connected with you? Absolutely. You can visit me uh, on my website, www.ashleyrcross.com. You can also find me on social media, Instagram, drashleyrcross.com. And I'm always pushing out new content uh, on the science of hope. I want to take this moment to thank everyone who has been connected here today. Thank you. If you found value and insight with the strategies discussed today, check out the show notes for further highlights and helpful links and consider subscribing to be notified when a new weekly episode is available. Also, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as that helps us know that you like this podcast and want more of it. A special thanks to today's guest and please be sure to follow them for more helpful information. Well, I'll connect with you on the next episode of Strategy Rewind, but in between time and in the meantime, check out miguellebron.com where you'll find free resources. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to you shortly.